Today's episode of Desert Sky Adventures is brought to you by the Hotel Tombstone, located on Allen Street, directly across from the Birdcage. Stop in and grab one of our new logo t-shirts, or pick one up from our merch shop at DesertSkyAdventures.store. Is Tombstone Haunted? Yes. Is Tombstone Haunted? Yes, it is. Is Tombstone Haunted? Yes. For sure haunted. Absolutely haunted. Is Tombstone haunted? Yes. Is Tombstone haunted? Absolutely. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to Desert Sky Adventures, and welcome back to Tombstone. Well, it is after midnight out here in Tombstone, a town considered by many to be one of the most haunted, if not the most haunted town in all of America. And tonight, we're going to walk the dusty streets of Tombstone, and we're going to take a look at some of the most reportedly haunted places in town and get first-hand accounts from some of the people who work in these places. Our first stop this evening will be the Undertaker's Espresso Bar on Allen Street. This is an old building with a rich history, and it's the only place I've ever captured something in Tombstone moving by itself. Take a close look in the upper right hand corner of your screen. And I guess the blood doesn't go into any type system. That board right there. Right I can't believe it. I was looking like this way. And this. Oh, I turned the lights off. This plug right here, I swear to God, it went like that. And the guy standing right here, I'm like, did you see that? He's like, what? It's like, that, that plug right there just moved. Undertaker's owner, Abby Lipinski, tells us about strange occurrences that happen in her coffee shop spirits here. Now I wasn't a big believer in paranormal things but there's definitely a lot of abnormal things that's happened in the over the year that I've been here. Uh, we get a lot of movement. We can see we have little toys down here. They often come in, we come in the morning and they're in different spots. I've had photos get moved around, heard footsteps. We've heard people talk around the bathroom which is super creepy um, and different things going on here. So Undertaker's Espresso Bar now conducts paranormal tours on certain nights of the week. You can check them out if you're interested. As this is said to be one of the more haunted locations in Tombstone. Across the street is the next stop on our tour, the Hotel Tombstone. This building has served as several different businesses through the years. The paranormal activity has been reported upstairs in the hotel for quite some time. But since the bottom floor has been turned into an arcade, the paranormal activity has been stepped up there as well. This sign here, uh, the OK Corral sign was actually built on set for the movie Tombstone. Uh, it's probably a couple hundred pounds, as you can see. It's very, very large. 
and it's very, very heavy. It took four of us on ladders to get it up there uh, and, and to mount it. And if you notice, there's a little piece of cardboard right here. Well, that cardboard used to be doubled in half. And if you zoom out and you look at the sign, it's actually crooked on the right. It comes down on the right a little bit. Well, it was even before. So one day I'm over here and um, I'm taking pictures of the guests under the sign. And I'm talking to them and they leave and I turn around. And then I turn back around and this little piece of cardboard was now sitting right between the two R's on the ledge of that sign. Hmm. No one was here. I get chills every time I talk about it. No one was here but me uh, and the guests that, that, that I had just taken their picture of. And it still gives me the chills and freaks me out every time I tell this story because I, I can't lift that. And you'd have to stand on the couch to get up there and try and move it. But who wants to try and move a 200-pound sign? So... Just a few blocks down Allen Street from the Hotel Tombstone is perhaps Tombstone's most legendary attraction, the OK Corral. This was the location of the most notorious gunfight in American history. But is it haunted? Let's talk to our friend Todd, an OK Corral gunfighter who spends a lot of time here. Well, it's funny you mentioned that because actually yesterday, at the end of our uh, last show, we're all getting set, ready to go home. And one of our set doors opened up and one of our guys on the cast had noticed kind of a shadow kind of like peeking in and thinking it was somebody they went to go the door shut again and then when they went to open the door to see if they can help whoever was there there was nobody outside um, we had similar incidents probably about a week or two ago um, where we're just standing backstage and we can hear the door handle turning and the door would open up but there'd be nobody outside so it's just little odds and ends it doesn't happen all the time but when it does it catches you off guard. If you walk around the corner from the OK Corral on Fremont Street, you'll come to two of the oldest buildings still standing in Tombstone. The San Jose House and the building that was formerly the Jack Crabtree Livery Stable. Today it's the Tombstone Cooperage. The owner of the Cooperage, Matt, didn't have a whole lot to tell us when it comes to paranormal, other than occasionally things seeming to move around by themselves. But he did provide us with this video of something that he couldn't explain. Take a look. You are currently being recorded. Nobody really knows what that strange orb is on the left side of the screen, but whatever it is, it set off the intrusion alarm. Something that has never happened before, and hasn't occurred since. Just a block or two up Fremont from the Cooperage is the Tombstone Antique Mall, a building that might not be as old as the Cooperage, or might not have quite the history of the OK Corral, but it does have a haunted history all of its own. I own the cafe in the back of the Antique Mall. Um, activity started for us right after we moved in here, about a year ago. Um, footsteps right behind you. It's not just creaky floorboards. There are, you can hear footsteps right behind you and you turn around, nobody's there. See things out of the corner of your eye. Very clearly something has moved past you, but you turn and there's, there's nothing there. Um, I always try to debunk it because as much as I believe in this stuff, I don't want to just believe in anything, but there's a lot of times where it's like, there's just, there's nothing. There's no explanation for it. I will hear voices in my ear in our kitchen back here one of the investigative teams told us that we have a um, how did they put it basically like a tricky poltergeist in the kitchen things will move things will get turned on after we know we've turned them off um, we do have our haunted doll up in the rafter we don't know what her name is but we know that she's mad that she's there one of the teams told us that as well um, she doesn't like being up there she's lonely and it's dusty I have not seen anything like appear to me, but others in the mall have. Um, like I said, we just, we hear things all the time, just things that you can't explain. 
back over to Allen Street now and the site of Smokey's Emporium, which stands on what was one time the Arlington Hotel, a very lavish hotel in Tombstone. Here's the owner of Smokey's, Steve Murray, to tell us about several spirits that he believes inhabit his shop. Well, there have been a number of things. Ben, ben is the, the ghost that stays with me basically forever and takes care of me and keeps me from hurting myself when I'm, I'm working. Ben, uh, to kind of punish me for a little incursion into his space when we first opened the shop, took one of my little replicas of a, a fossil skull and shoved it off the shelf and broke it. That's Ben. Ben can be uh, Henri, but he's by the numbers and he keeps all the other ghosts in line. We, we were talking earlier about Ben helping me when I first met him and didn't know who he was. I didn't know why he was giving me so much trouble, but apparently he wanted a shelf and his broken watch. So I got him a shelf and his broken watch and we've been best friends forever now. Now he's got about eight shelves and 10 watches, all broken. The first watch I brought, bought the watch and broke it because it wasn't broken. And he had actually specified that it had to be broken. I do talk with ghosties. So when I say we spoke, we actually spoke. And there are, there are 11 friends here on the first floor. There's Lizzie on the second floor. She won't let anybody else live up there except Ben. I did take one of Ben's safes. All ghosties like money, so I have cast iron safes for Ben, and I took one upstairs so that he could kind of protect Christmas, who lives up there, from Lizzie. She was driving Christmas crazy in the middle of the night. Wouldn't let him sleep. So it, it's stuff like that that you need to get around. And, and nobody's ornery. I did bring uh, my little girl from the Milton. So you'll see around a number of music boxes. Those aren't for sale. Those are hers. I walk around every once in a while and turn them on. And she gets happy. Um, and, and I do have people volunteer. I'm, I'm kind of, uh, be, because of the, the first undertaker in Tombstone being in the corner of this building, um, I'm kind of loaded up with ghosties. The only place I've seen with more is the old school. It's swimming in ghosts. If you walk in there, they'll be brushing by you constantly and chatting. But ghosts are people too. People, people get excited about what they are. And, um, I have a, well, someday we'll talk about what I think they are, but, but they are not, not the enemy. They are your best friend if you let them. I did have a woman, I was explaining something about Ben, and she said she didn't believe in ghosts. And I said, well, I don't believe in snakes, but people get bitten every year. So don't believe if you want to, but they're people too, just like us. Some are happy, some are pissed off. Some like Ben just want to help if you get to know them. Just outside of town is the legendary Boot Hill Graveyard. You would think if Tombstone was haunted, this would be the number one hotspot. But let's talk to some of the employees that work there about their experience. You've spent a lot of time here. Do you think uh, Boot Hill is haunted? Definitely. Definitely. There's no doubt about it. I, you know, I, Luckily, I guess I'm the one that gets to come out here when the, when the big name ghost hunters come to town. And, and they come up with some amazing things. One thing I will tell you. It happened to me that uh, still to this day, it's a hair on my arms. Up. A marshal pulled up, Marshal Bear, a lady. She pulls up because she didn't know what was going on at midnight. Mm -hmm. Okay, She pulls up, and I go out and talk to her. And in talking to her, I could tell she was interested in the ghost hunting and all that stuff. So I asked her to come in. As we are walking down, the ghost hunters are at Marshal Fred White's grave. And the voice box said, and I'll quote, here they come, and Marshal Bear is with them. Now, how how in the world Marshal Bear's name came up, I have no idea, but she freaked, I freaked, everybody kind of went, are you Marshal Bear? <laughs> it was, so. It is a weekend we had a lot of children visitors come through, 
in the evening when I went to shut everything down and close the restroom, I heard kids laughing very faintly. I didn't really think much of it. Um, and the next morning I came to open up and I heard that same laughter when I walked outside, opened the restroom door and the toilet was running and there was a pile of toilet paper in the middle of the floor. Um, another weirdness, uh, Kirby and I do offerings here for our spirits and we had got some special Christmas cookies and I had failed to share with the spirits and they made themselves known by tossing a phone at me. Just off of Highway 80 in the heart of Tombstone is the Larian Motel, a very popular destination for tourists in the area. The legends of this motel being haunted go back almost as long as the hotel itself. While owner of the hotel, Gordon Anderson, could not confirm or deny if the hotel was haunted, he did provide us with a photo that was taken by a tourist sometime several years back. This image taken by a hotel guest was supposedly of an empty room, but as you see in the window there is a strange anomaly making its presence known. Here is a closer look. What does it look like to you? What do you think? Did this Larian Motel guest capture something supernatural? Or is there some other explanation? Perhaps you could book yourself a stay at the Larian Motel in Tombstone and find out for yourself. All of the locations in this video, with exception to the Larian, are places that you can explore for yourself during the Tombstone Wild West Paracon coming up the end of April. If you've ever wondered if Tombstone is as haunted as people say, this could be your chance to find out for yourself. But that's going to wrap it up for our haunted look at Tombstone tonight. I thank you all so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, do us a favor, hit the like button on the way out. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. That's going to wrap it up for today, folks. So until next time, until the next video, we'll see you down the road.